Living in a high-rise condo is just the best. I definitely made the right call signing the lease. A high-rise condo? What are you talking about? I'm talking about our new home, obviously. What are you even saying? He said this with a full smile, but I didn't understand. I had never heard such a conversation. Where did the money come from? Yeah. It's the insurance money left by your previous husband. Then, someone visited us. There stood my mother-in-law. Why are you here? I'll let myself in. She walked right into the house. I've been waiting for you, mom. Is it about that matter? Yes. Please, have a seat. From their conversation, it seemed that my mother-in-law knew about the high-rise condo too. I was the only one left out. Then, my husband said something outrageous. We're going to live in the condo, the three of us. How can you just say that all of a sudden? If you don't like it, we can get a divorce. I don't mind. I was speechless at his selfishness. Then, my mother-in-law smirked and mocked me. Don't be so surprised. You'll handle all the household chores, right? Not only had he signed a lease for the condo, but he also planned to treat me like a maid. I had been balancing work and household duties, but I was reaching my limit. I went to the bedroom, took something out of the drawer, and showed it to my husband and mother-in-law. What is this? A divorce paper. I've already found a lawyer. It was good that I had prepared it in advance. Both my husband and mother-in-law looked at each other, shocked. Afterward, I divorced my husband and moved abroad. But my revenge didn't end there. There's more to come. As a result, my husband and his family faced a huge consequence. I am Susan. I turned 40 last month. Now, I work at a securities company. I got into investing in college and became deeply involved. That's when I met my first husband. How about we go out for dinner sometime? Sure. Where to? I found a great place recently. Look forward to it. We continued as good friends, and at the time of graduation, he proposed, and we got married. My husband was an investor and had a decent fortune. But he never bragged or settled for it. I truly believe those were happy times. Your husband had an accident. Please come to the hospital immediately. It was right after I finished work. I rushed to the hospital, but he was already gone. My mind went blank and I don't remember much after that. I was 30 years old. For years after losing my husband, I couldn't accept reality and time just passed by. I inherited his assets, but honestly, I didn't care. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. You don't look like it. The person who spoke to me kindly was Dan, my current husband and a co-worker at work. Back then, I was grieving the loss of my first husband, feeling a profound sadness, but also loneliness. Dan always listened to my complaints and stories without ever seeming annoyed. Looking back, I might have been an easy target during that time. How about we grab a meal sometime? Oh, yes. I found a great place, but it's awkward to go alone. I see. Being with Dan was comforting. Our relationship continued, and when I was 34, he proposed. I accepted. It wasn't that I had forgotten my first husband, but I did need support. I told my parents, but one person objected. But I've made my decision. I'm worried. Are you sure he's okay? What do you mean? Isn't he just after your money? That's not an issue. We haven't even discussed that. My sister lived abroad, unmarried, enjoying her life alone. I admired her but I wanted someone by my side. Eventually, my sister came around, and our married life began. However, there was one concern. My mother-in-law. Susan, you'll be following my instructions from now on. My mother-in-law didn't live with us, but came to our new home and said that. Then she left. Huh? Sorry about that. I didn't expect my mom to say something like that. Don't worry about it. Okay. At that time, Dan helped me through it, but she kept visiting, nagging, then leaving. One weekend, my mother-in-law said, 
Didn't you lose your first husband? Yes, I did. What was he like? I thought it was insensitive to ask, but I answered to avoid future trouble. Well, my first husband was an investor. An investor? He must have made a lot. Not really, as far as I know. Can't be. Dan was there too, and as soon as I mentioned investor, his interest peaked. Could you make some coffee? Oh, yes. While preparing coffee in the kitchen, I noticed them talking. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but my mother-in-law had a sly smile. I felt a chill. Susan, is my coffee ready? I'll bring it right now. When I returned, their demeanor had changed back to normal. After she left from her usual chit-chat, Dan confronted me at dinner. Why didn't you tell me? About what? About your first husband. I just thought it wasn't necessary to discuss. Does that mean you don't trust me? Why would you think that? I just didn't think it was important. However, Dan remained irritated. At that moment, I couldn't understand why he was so upset. I will find out why later. From that day, Dan became harsher towards me. How was work today? Oh, I'm not feeling well. I'm going to take a day off. Right. Dan started taking more days off. Since we work at the same company, colleagues would ask why he was absent, but I just said he was feeling under the weather. However, thinking back to the day before, it was obvious he was faking it. I couldn't stop wondering what he was up to all day at work. And then, when I got home. What's all this? The room was cluttered with stuff everywhere. Hey! What are you doing? Oh. Just looking for something. But I can't find it anywhere. Should I help then? Suddenly, Dan raised his voice. Susan, don't do anything. Don't touch it. I was taken aback by his sudden outburst. So, are you feeling better then? Feeling better? Oh, yeah, much better. I've been sleeping all day. I realized right away. Dan was faking being sick to look for something. Something he didn't want me to find. This situation repeated several times. And since he couldn't find it, Dan had a new plan. I'm going to the salon today, so I'll be back late in the afternoon. Okay. Got it. Take your time. Yeah. He seemed oddly happy. Happy that I was going out. When I came back home, I could hear voices inside. There was someone else with Dan. I hesitantly opened the front door. I'm home. I heard a panicked voice from inside. Oh, you're back early. Yeah. So, who's visiting? Yeah, it's my mom. Your mother? Then, my mother-in-law showed her face. You're back already? She looked disappointed. I decided to ask her a question. Did you find what you were looking for? What were you looking for? Yes. That's why you came today, right? I thought Dan couldn't find it alone and asked his mother to help. You knew? Dan interrupted. Mom, you don't need to say anything extra. And Susan, don't ask unnecessary questions. For some reason, I was the one getting scolded. Why do I have to be talked to like this? I haven't done anything wrong. You don't need to interfere, it's none of your business. That's right, Susan. It's not your concern. My mother-in-law, who was quiet until then, suddenly got fiery with Dan's words. Enough already! Can you just go somewhere else? This is my house, though. Dan's right. Just stay outside until we say it's okay. See? Just like Mom said, go outside. Dan forcefully pushed me out of the house. And they even locked the door and put the chain on. Lost, I decided to consult with my sister. My sister is always reliable in times like these. Hello? Susan? What's up? Well, actually. I explained everything to my sister. At first, she listened silently, but even she was outraged by Dan and his mother's behavior. That's not normal at all. But why would they do something like that? While pondering, my sister seemed to have an epiphany. 
Maybe they're looking for something related to your previous husband's inheritance. Didn't you mention he was an investor? Oh! Everything clicked. Their attitude had indeed changed drastically after I mentioned that. Seems like you've hit the nail on the head. Yeah! After ending the call, I killed some time before heading back home. The door was unlocked, so I went inside. Dan's mother had apparently left already. Sorry about earlier. It's okay. I'm not bothered. Good. Dan seemed relieved, but inside, I was seething with anger. They quieted down for a while, but it was clear they hadn't given up. That's why I acted immediately. I secured the documents I received from my first husband in a safety box. I thought it was secure. Only my sister and a close friend knew about this. This should keep it hidden and safe from them. I also prepared divorce papers, ready to use them if needed. I didn't want to be the one to initiate the divorce, so I was biding my time. Before I knew it, I turned 40. The one place I felt at peace was at work. Going out today? Yeah. Mom wants me to help her with shopping. Have a good time. He went out with his mother almost every week. It was obvious they were planning something behind my back. I was almost hoping they would slip up. His mother started asking me to come over frequently to help with chores. Just need some help tidying up. Sure. Start with the storage shed outside. His mother's house was an old family home where she lived alone. Managing it all by herself would be difficult. But it was strange she never asked for help before. She must be up to something. I worked hard cleaning the cluttered and dusty shed. It seemed like it hadn't been cleaned for many years, and it was overflowing with dust and garbage. After hours, I finally finished, only to be asked to clean inside the house next. Come on. Don't just stand there. There's still a lot to do. She just gave orders from the living room. I could have complained, but I knew it would only make things worse. So I endured, saving it for the right moment. All done. All right. You can go home now. Her lack of appreciation made me glare at her. What's with that look? Nothing. If you have a complaint, just say it. No, I don't. Such an irritating daughter-in-law. I thought the same about her. I couldn't keep living like this. I started making excuses to avoid her requests. But she complained to Dan. Lately, you've been refusing to help mom. I can't always go over there. She's your mother-in-law. Then you should go. You're her son. What? Despite his complaints, I didn't pay much attention. It was too exhausting to engage every time. Then, one weekend, Dan returned with an unusual expression. I braced myself for something. Welcome back. We need to talk. Sit down. A talk? I was in the middle of preparing dinner. And sat on the sofa. Dan had a smug look. High-rise condo is the best. Signing the lease was the right decision. A high-rise condo? What are you talking about? It's about our new home, obviously. What are you saying? He said this with a big smile, but I couldn't understand the meaning. I had never heard such a conversation before. Besides, Dan didn't have the money to buy such a thing. Where did the money come from? Yeah. It's from the insurance money left by your previous husband. Then, someone knocked at the door. My mother-in-law was standing there. Why are you here? I'm coming in. She marched right into the house. I've been waiting, Mom. That matters, right? Yeah. Please, have a seat. From their exchange, it seemed like my mother-in-law also knew about the high-rise condo. I was the only one left out. Then Dan blurted out something outrageous. We're going to live in the condo, the three of us. How can you just say that all of a sudden? If you don't like it, we can get a divorce. I don't mind. I was speechless at his selfishness. My mother-in-law also started smirking and mocking me. Don't be so surprised. You'll handle all the household chores, right? 
Not only had he signed a lease for the condo, but he also planned to treat me like a maid. I had been balancing work and household duties, but I was reaching my limit. And you don't think I can afford such a thing, right? Yes, that's right. But it's not me who's paying. You mean me? Exactly. You've been hiding the inheritance from your previous husband from us, haven't you? We couldn't find it, but we realized we didn't need to. That's despicable. Say whatever you want. Dan and his mother had changed their strategy, thinking the inheritance was out of reach. But they were gravely mistaken if they thought I'd comply. I went to the bedroom, took something out of the drawer, and showed it to Dan and his mother. What is this? A divorce paper. I've already consulted a lawyer. It was good that I had prepared it in advance. Dan and his mother looked at each other, shocked. They never imagined I would take such a step. If you do this, you'll regret it. Are you sure about this? Yes. I've been waiting for the right moment to divorce. Think it over. Nobody will be happy with this. It's too late now. I've already decided. Then do as you please. Dan! Are you serious? Calm down. She won't listen to anything. This was convenient for me. Then will you sign it right away? It's okay, right? Yeah. I'll sign it. Dan, ignoring his mother's advice, signed his name. Such a foolish man to do this on a whim. Thank you. I'll file this. If you're satisfied, then just leave. I was planning to do that anyway. Goodbye. Wait, Susan. And so, I left the house. I booked a hotel and decided to think about what to do next. It had been a long time since I felt so at peace. Then, I contacted my sister. I needed advice about what to do next. I need to talk to you about something. You're calling about your husband and mother-in-law, aren't you? You know me so well. So, what happened this time? Well, I'm thinking of getting a divorce. I see. My sister wasn't surprised. She probably saw this coming sooner or later. She's always one step ahead. The reason is the worst. Dan signed a lease for a condo without telling me. What? So, they found it? No. They couldn't find it, so they resorted to this as a last measure. That's ridiculous. My sister sighed. All that's left is to file the divorce, but I'm not sure what to do next. I have a good idea. What? Tell me. Well. Her suggestion was surprising, but it seemed like a viable option. The next day, I gave notice of my resignation at work. I enjoyed my job and wanted to continue, but the thought of sharing the same space with Dan suddenly became unbearable. I was persuaded to stay, but I explained my situation and they understood. And a week later, I was to meet my sister at the airport. In the meantime, I made preparations, but there was no contact from Dan or his mother. See you at the airport tomorrow. Okay. Is your luggage all set? It's fine. I got rid of everything unnecessary while no one was at home. The next day, after filing the divorce papers, I flew overseas with my sister. I hadn't been abroad since I traveled there with my first husband. There was a mix of excitement and anxiety. My mother-in-law might have known, but Dan faced a huge consequence for his actions. The only regret was not being able to see his reaction when he realized it. This is our new home from today. Impressive, isn't it? More than impressive. It's huge and fantastic. Now you can do whatever you want here. Thank you. Honestly, it was much more impressive than the high-rise Dan had leased. The thought of starting a new life in this house filled me with excitement. Three days later, my phone rang. Hello? Susan! Stop Dan! It was my mother-in-law. I didn't expect her to be the one to call. Calm down, please. Ever since you left, he's gone crazy. Gone crazy? He tried to cancel the lease on the condo and couldn't, and he hasn't come home since. 
Dan couldn't face reality and had run away, it seemed. But that was no longer my concern. That's unfortunate, but it has nothing to do with me. Please solve your own problems. She got angry at my response. This is all your fault for hiding things. Take responsibility. I took a deep breath. Don't blame me. The one who went off the rails is at fault. You're the worst. The worst is on your side. Anyway, what happens to him is none of my business. I'm hanging up now. I ended the call. My sister spoke to me. Your ex-husband? No, it's about my mother-in-law. I bet it's nothing good, right? Yeah. She's troubled because they can't cancel the condo lease. What? That's all their own doing. I told her that, and she got mad. They're really stupid. We continued to laugh about it together. I never thought I'd have such a fun time talking about such things with someone. That day, my sister and I celebrated with drinks until the morning. Just when I thought it was time to sleep. I received a call on my smartphone. Again? What a hassle. Thinking it was my mother-in-law again, I checked the screen and saw it was my ex-husband, Dan. I hesitated but decided to answer, curious about his situation. What do you want? Where are you now? Why do you ask? I want to come see you. I don't have any business with you. Dan didn't know where I was. He couldn't imagine I was not in the US. I have something to discuss with you. Where are you? I can tell you, but you won't be able to come. Do you still want to know? What do you mean? Just tell me. I'm overseas right now, living with my sister. You can't come here, can you? Dan was speechless when he realized I was abroad. By the way, you're troubled because you can't cancel the condo lease, right? Yeah, that's right. So, just so you know, I'm not going to do something stupid like helping you. What? You're calling because you can't pay for it yourself, right? This is all your fault. Then sue me? Though that would be pointless. I provoked him further. Since it has come to this, I'll provoke him thoroughly and then hang up the phone. Don't mess with me. Who's to blame for this? Let me tell you. It's you. This is the result of your reckless actions. If only you had told me where the inheritance was. I didn't tell you because I knew this would happen. You and your mother are just greedy for money. That's not true. Then why did you desperately search the house? It's really sad. Anyway, since you signed the contract, you handle it. I'm hanging up. Wait. Just help me a little. No way. Seeing no point in continuing the conversation, I hung up. How disappointing can a man be? But I wondered how my ex-husband, burdened with huge debts, would survive. That was the only thing I was curious about. Half a year passed since I came here, with no further contact. I'm thinking of going back home. What about you? Yeah, I'm curious too. Let's go back. Then it's settled. We decided to temporarily return. I was curious about my ex-husband and his mother. I went to my old house. But Dan wasn't there. Going to his mother's house, I found it was now vacant land for sale. Well, that figures. Then, someone called out to me from behind. A neighbor, who knew my former mother-in-law, approached me. They said they had moved out like a night flight a few weeks ago. Not surprising, really. I also visited a friend. It was a former colleague. Long time no see. How have you been? From this friend, I learned about my ex-husband's current situation. So that's what happened. Yeah, he quit the company after signing a lease for that expensive condo. Oh really? But doing that only makes things more difficult. So, where is he now? Now he's somewhere in the countryside. Sounds like them. I doubt they can lead a decent life. That's harsh. But we're divorced, after all. Just as I thought, they were struggling. But the hardest part was yet to come. I couldn't help but laugh. Now, I'll live freely with my sister.
I probably won't marry again, but that's fine. I will enjoy my freedom.